Well, I had a lot of you asking whether or not I was gonna share some of my fall recipes, but I was kind of waiting until October because I feel like it's not truly fall until it's October 1st. That's just how I feel. And so today I'm gonna to be sharing some awesome fall inspired recipes, but these are gonna be like lazy dinners. Easy recipes, ones that come together pretty quickly. I've got a couple of our favorites, and then I have a couple new ones that are super delicious. I'd also like to thank Frontier Soups for sponsoring a portion of today's video, but we will talk about them a little bit later. Okay, so grab a cup of coffee or tea, and let's get to making some of these cozy fall recipes. And if we haven't met before, my name is Ange, welcome, and this is the Menu Made Kitchen. Okay, so this first recipe I'm gonna be sharing with you is my turkey chili with pumpkin. This recipe is always like the invitation into the fall season. I have to make this every year. It's really easy. You use canned pumpkin and it just has that savory but that little bit of sweetness. It's so delicious. I know you're gonna love it. All right, for my turkey pumpkin chili, I'm gonna add one tablespoon of olive oil to my Dutch oven. We're gonna add in a whole pound of ground turkey. I've also diced up a small yellow onion. So this turkey chili is so fast to make. I love it for lazy nights, but it's also very cozy, definitely fall. Um, so we're just gonna get the ground turkey cooked up here and the onions softened, and then we'll start adding in the rest of our ingredients. Okay, ground turkey is finished cooking. So now we're gonna add in a couple of garlic cloves minced. I'm also going to add in my seasonings. I've got some, let's see if you can see that. I've got my chili powder, two teaspoons, one teaspoon of cumin, one teaspoon of smoked paprika, one teaspoon of oregano, one teaspoon of salt, and one teaspoon of pepper. Lots of seasonings. Definitely want this to be nice and kind of warm and spicy. I mean, not like, you know, like my level of spicy, which is basically barely anything. <laughs> All right, now we're gonna add in all of our goodies. I've got two cups of chicken broth. We're gonna add in one can of fire roasted tomatoes, and this does have green chilies in it. And I'm gonna use the juice and everything. We're also gonna add in one can of pumpkin puree, not pumpkin pie filling, just plain old pumpkin. I also have one can of black beans. I've rinsed and drained these. We're gonna do one can of kidney beans, also rinsed and drained. And then for our last ingredient, I have nine ounces of fire roasted frozen corn. Okay, we're gonna stir all this together. I'm gonna to bring this back up to kind of a low boil and we're gonna simmer this for about 15 or 20 minutes. I mean, it really doesn't take long at all. Obviously, the longer you simmer it, kind of the richer the flavor becomes but you could really serve this in as quick as like 15 minutes. And I'm gonna serve this with really simple chili toppings. We've got some cheese, some sour cream, maybe a little cilantro. It's gonna be good. Okay, so our turkey pumpkin chili is finished cooking and you can see it got nice and thick. So obviously the longer that you let it simmer on the stove, the thicker it's gonna be. So if you decided to, that you needed dinner on the table in 15 minutes, it's gonna be a little bit more brothier, but either way, the flavor will be delicious. So I added some cheese, a little sour cream, some green onion, obviously set out any of your favorite chili toppings. And I'm gonna be trying these with a fun chip too, but I wanted to try it just by itself with a little bit of my toppings. Okay, there we go. Such a great chili recipe. I love the addition of pumpkin. I feel like it just gives the chili a little bit of sweetness and creaminess. It's also a good way to add a little bit of veggie to your soup or chili or whatever. This is a great recipe. Okay, I wanna try it with these chips. So I got these at Trader Joe's. Um, a couple days ago and they are pumpkin tortilla chips and I don't remember them having these last year but they have a little bit of like cinnamon and nutmeg in them so I thought that they'd be kind of fun with this chili okay let's try it that is really fun if you have a Trader Joe's in your area you've got to pick up these chips because they're really delicious plain but with the kind of spicy chili, it is absolutely fantastic. Okay, well speaking of lazy, we all know how easy it is to open up a can of soup, but is it really that good? 
I'm not a huge fan of canned soup. I really haven't found one out there that just wowed me. It's just more something that I would get at the store because I'm just, I'm being lazy and I need something quick and easy. So back in the spring, Frontier Soups sent me a variety of their soups to try, and I was really hesitant and skeptical about how well these soups were gonna taste. They really promote clean ingredients, non-GMO, gluten-free. There's so many great qualities about the soups, but again, I was, I was skeptical. So my husband and I took these soup mixes to the test, and I am telling you genuinely with all my heart, these are incredible. I was so impressed with the flavor and just the quality of the ingredients. Really easy to put together. The instructions are simple on the back. You only need to add a few of your own ingredients from home and then the soup mix really is where all the flavors at. So a little bit about Frontier Soups, which is now called Anderson House. This is a family owned business. They have been in business since 1983. So for like over 35 years, which I think says a lot about a company. So Trisha Anderson, the founder of the company, the mom, she actually shared her 11 bean soup mix at a holiday market in Minnesota years ago. And from there, it's just taken off. They have created tons of different kinds of soups and they have some baking mixes and dips now. You know, it wasn't very often that I would buy cans of soup for the reason that they just didn't taste great, but I'm so excited to have these in my pantry in place of that because I know the ingredients are quality and I know that the soups are delicious. I'll put a link in the description so you can check out Anderson House. I'll also mark the soups that were our absolute favorites, but they were all really, really good. You can also get 10% off your first order on their website using the code MENUMADE10. That'll give you 10% off your first order. I'm super excited for you guys to try these. So for our one pot ground beef stroganoff, I'm gonna add one tablespoon of butter to my large skillet. You definitely wanna make sure you have a skillet with high sides because once we add the noodles, it's, you're gonna need the space. So we'll get our butter melted. Okay, and then we're gonna add in one pound of lean ground beef. I'm also gonna do a half a cup of chopped up yellow onion. Okay, and then we'll just cook our ground beef until it's no longer pink and our onions are softened. This will take about five minutes. And then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, this looks pretty good and I'm not gonna drain any of the extra fat. I definitely want that because we're gonna be cooking the mushrooms. So speaking of, I'm gonna use a whole eight ounce container of already pre-sliced mushrooms just to make my life a little bit easier. And then for our seasonings, I have a half a teaspoon of dried thyme, a quarter teaspoon of garlic powder. I have a half a teaspoon of salt and a half a teaspoon of pepper. And then I don't have this on my website, but I am gonna add a little bit of the umami seasoning. I have shared this a lot on some of my videos. I love this seasoning so much. It is just, it's the perfect combination. It adds such depth of flavor. So I don't think I'm gonna measure. I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it, sprinkle in a little bit. So I guess we'll probably end up with like maybe a half a teaspoon. Okay, so we'll give this a stir. And at this point, I wanna cook the mushrooms until they're kind of golden brown and they're broken down and they're soft. Okay, this looks perfect. The mushrooms have browned up and there's no more liquid in the pan, which is good. So we're gonna add in one teaspoon of Worcestershire. I'm also gonna add in four cups of beef stock. Okay, and then I'm also gonna add about a half a cup of water. And then if I need a little bit more water um, while the noodles are cooking, then I can always add more, but you can't take it away. So we don't want this to end up too soupy. We want this to be nice and creamy. So at this point, I'm gonna bring this liquid to a boil, and then we're gonna add in our egg noodles. Okay, now that this has come to a boil, I'm gonna add three and a half cups of extra wide egg noodles. And then once this comes back up to a boil, we're gonna cook this about nine to 10 minutes, really until the noodles are done, and then you'll notice there won't be as much liquid. There's still gonna be some liquid in there, but it'll reduce a lot. And we'll just kind of stir it occasionally as we let it cook. That'll also help kind of um, evaporate some of the liquid. All right, so this has been cooking for 10 minutes. And as you can see, there's just a little bit of liquid at the bottom, but that's what you want. So this is about where you want it in terms of how much, you know, of the broth is left over. 
Okay, so to finish this off, we're gonna add in three quarters cup of sour cream. This will obviously give it that creamy stroganoff silkiness. Sometimes like the words I come up with or the sentences I come up with. Okay, and then obviously we're just gonna stir this in. And that little bit of liquid in there will just continue to absorb into the noodles. So you actually, you want that because you definitely don't want a dry stroganoff. We want this to be nice and creamy. And then all that's left to do is I'm just gonna scatter about a quarter cup of chopped up fresh parsley, really to make it look pretty. All right, that is it. It is ready to taste. Okay, I literally feel like I've been transported back to my childhood with the smells in here and even just this meal right here. This is something my mom used to make all the time and we loved it. I feel like I remember her serving it with like cottage cheese and then of course she would always do a side salad. Okay, check that out. Can you see that? So creamy. This is seriously the best ground beef stroganoff recipe. Well, I haven't tried them all, but I love mine. That umami seasoning that I put in there, it definitely took it up a notch. It was really good before that, but I think I'm gonna add that to the website because like I said, you can get that seasoning off Amazon. So if you don't have a Trader Joe's in your area, I feel like I have parsley in my teeth, um, you can still get it online. I'm really excited for you to try this, the ground beef stroganoff. If you've never made it in just one pan like that, it is so stinking easy. And I feel like it's even more delicious because all the flavors cook together. So, so good. Okay, so for my butternut squash and chicken sausage skillet meal, we're gonna start by adding one tablespoon of olive oil to our pan here. And I've got it set at like a medium heat. And I just wanted to show you, I'm using this sweet Italian chicken sausage from Trader Joe's and I'm just using a half a pound of this. So I'm gonna put this in the freezer and then I can use this for another meal. So you really get two meals out of the one pound of chicken sausage. All right, so in goes our chicken sausage. And I've already removed the casing off the top of the sausages. You definitely wanna do that. So basically, I'm gonna get this crumbled and cooked up until the meat is cooked, and then we'll move on with the next step. Okay, now that our chicken sausage is cooked through, I'm actually gonna transfer this to my little pie dish here, just to get it out of the pan, because we need to cook up our butternut squash. Okay, and so to our pan here, I'm gonna add in one tablespoon of butter. I am gonna add just a teensy little splash of olive oil. All right, so now I have two cups of cubed butternut squash and I just bought a bag from Trader Joe's that was already peeled and cut up for me just to make this extra lazy because I didn't wanna to have to do that extra step. All right, so we'll give these a toss. I am gonna season these a little bit with salt and pepper. And really, we wanna cook the butternut squash until the pieces are golden brown and they're kind of fork tender. This is gonna take probably about 10 to 12 minutes. Okay, so you can see how beautiful and caramelized the butternut squash is. So I'm gonna transfer these little guys also to the pan with the chicken sausage. We're gonna add one more tablespoon of olive oil and I'm also gonna throw in two garlic cloves minced saute that for just a second so I can kind of smell it and it smells real garlicky, which is pretty much right now. <laughs> then next I'm gonna add this six ounce bag of baby spinach. And it's gonna look like a ton, but it will definitely wilt down to almost nothing. All right, as you can see, it's nice and wilted and some of the moisture from the spinach kind of breaks up those little bits on the bottom of the pan, which is great because a lot of the flavor is in there. Okay, so I've turned my heat down to low and I'm gonna slowly add in my one cup of half and half. I'm also gonna add in a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg and I have a quarter teaspoon of red pepper flakes. 
and I'm going to bring up the heat just a little bit because I want to bring the cream to just kind of a low boil before we add in our Parmesan cheese. It already smells so delicious. Like to me, this is the definition of cozy fall recipe, but also very quick and easy using simple things that are convenient like the butternut squash, prepackaged spinach that I don't have to wash or mess with. I've got a half cup of grated Parmesan cheese. I think I'm gonna switch over to my spatula I was using earlier. This is looking good. The sauce is starting to thicken a little bit. And then next we're gonna add our pasta. I like to use this Campanelli pasta, but you can use macaroni or penne. And I put it in my pasta maker that I like to put in the microwave to make it easy so I didn't have to boil it on the stove and dirty a pot. So we're gonna add two cups of our cooked pasta in. And I'm also gonna add back in all of my butternut squash and chicken sausage. So I have dirtied three different kinds of spoons, but it's much better than having to clean a pot. So basically, I'm just gonna stir all of this together until the cream and the pasta and all the stuff is combined, you know? So because the pasta has lots of starch, it's gonna kind of thicken the sauce a little bit, but I also did scoop out a little bit or ladle out a little bit of the pasta water just in case I needed it. Okay, I'm gonna give it a little taste because I wanna make sure that it doesn't need any salt and pepper. I mean, if this does not say fall or taste like fall, I don't know what does. That little bit of nutmeg in there is so good. And even if you don't like nutmeg, I suggest you still put it in there because it's just, it's just a little hint of warmth. All right, pretty much guys, this is ready to serve. Alrighty, we are ready to taste this. That look delicious and hot. Okay, I wanted to get just a little bit of everything on here. A little butternut and some sausage. Mm -hmm. Like I mentioned earlier, that teensy bit of nutmeg in there, it just makes this so cozy in fall. I love the sweetness of the butternut. It's not squashy. <laughs> so if you're not like a squash fan, this just adds a little bit of sweetness, but you could also do carrots or like I said, sweet potatoes. So delicious. The pasta is cooked perfectly. And that little bit of Italian sweet chicken sausage is delicious in this. Such a fantastic fall skillet meal. I think you're really gonna enjoy this. All right, so for our chicken potato chowder, we're gonna start out by cooking our bacon. So I have six slices of bacon that I've chopped up. And so this recipe isn't quite as lazy as the other ones, but it's still very easy and it's definitely cozy and perfect for fall. So I'm gonna get our bacon cooked up so it's nice and crispy and then we'll transfer it to a plate. Okay, you can see I removed my bacon and I also removed most of the bacon grease. I left about two tablespoons in the pot and I have two chicken breasts that I've cut up into small cubes. You can also put the chicken breasts in whole and cook them that way, but I wanted this to definitely be a quick step. So the chicken's only gonna probably take maybe five to eight minutes to cook. And then we'll also transfer this to another plate. Okay, we got our chicken out of the pan. I am gonna add just a little bit of butter and then I'm gonna add in about a cup of chopped up yellow onion. I'm also gonna do two large carrots and I have two celery stalks. We're gonna cook these veggies down for about five minutes because they are going to continue to cook when we add the chicken broth and cook the potatoes. So I just wanna saute them just a little bit. Now that our veggies have had a chance to soften, I'm gonna add in two minced garlic cloves. All right, and then we're gonna be adding some seasonings. I have a half a teaspoon each of oregano, thyme, rosemary, poultry seasoning. I have ground mustard and black pepper. I'll cook the garlic and just kind of toast the seasonings a little bit. And then I'm gonna add in one teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce. And then I'm also gonna add a quarter cup of flour. 
Okay, so we're just gonna cook down the flour for like a minute just to make sure there isn't any raw flour taste. And this is obviously gonna act as the thickener in our chowder. And then we're gonna be adding five cups of chicken stock. And I'm just gonna give this a stir and kind of scrape up the bits off the bottom of the pan. That is gonna give the soup lots of flavor, so make sure to do that. Before this comes to a boil, I'm also gonna add in my half and half, and I have one cup here. You can also do heavy cream if you really want this to be rich. And then we're gonna add in, I've got some russet potatoes that I've cubed. This is about four medium-sized potatoes. Try to add those in without splattering myself. And then we'll add back in our chicken as well. All right, and once this comes to a boil, we're gonna cook it about 15 to 20 minutes, really just until the potatoes are tender, like fork tender. And then the soup will have thickened some. And then we'll top it with a few little toppings and then we get to taste it. Okay, so I added a little bit of the bacon in with the chowder, stirred it in, and then I like to usually leave most of it to sprinkle on the top because I like the bacon to be crispy. And then a little bit of green onion. You can definitely add some cheese to this if you want, a little sour cream. I'll probably actually grate some cheese to have for later. Oh wow. That broth is so flavorful with the herbs and the Worcestershire. Like those are definitely flavor boosters when it comes to soups and stews. Lots of potatoes and chicken. Of course, that bacon just definitely makes it. This is so good. And like I said, not the laziest uh, fall recipe, but definitely easy and definitely worth making. Well, I hope you're inspired to make some of these lazy fall dinners. And don't forget all the recipe links can be found in the descriptions. And don't forget to use the code MENUMADE10 to receive 10% off your first order with Anderson House, which I actually think would be a great gift to give during the holidays. I would sure like a little basket of soups. And hey, if you're new here, I'd love for you to be part of my YouTube family. So make sure to subscribe. I hope you have a really blessed week and we will see you next time.